Welcome back friends. Welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. And in this lecture, I'm going to talk about purine biosynthesis. And in a sense, uh, not only purine biosynthesis, but most of the part of the uh, nucleotide biosynthesis. You know, the idea of nucleotide biosynthesis is not a very unique uh, because the purine biosynthesis pathway or pyrimidine biosynthesis pathway, they are linked with multiple other types of metabolic pathways in our body. So it's not a sole or unique pathway in that sense. Now, the idea of purine biosynthesis, it requires two different and important uh, stages. The first thing that they require here in this case is the source or the starter molecule that is the ribose the sugar that they require and that sugar needs to be delivered in the active form right because remember uh, the building block of any of this nucleotide that, that there is a sugar plus there is a base right in the nucleotide biosynthesis now the bases are of two types purines and pyrimidines the example of purine is adenine and guanine pyrimidines are cytosine and thymine or uracil now in this case when they are producing nucleotides they are not actually when we're talking about nucleotide metabolism we're not talking about production of purine base only we're talking about this complete structure sugar base phosphates all of these things together uh, that will be known as a nucleotide the complete form and once you add nucleotides you will form nucleic acids so here uh, the first material is ribose sugar but the ribose as its own form is inactive to participate in any process of production of nucleotides so we need to make it active so to make the ribose active we need to attach a phosphate and convert the ribose into ribose 5 phosphate this is a very important step that needs to happen even before the nucleotide biosynthesis while on the other hand the synthesis of the base if you look the purine in, in its in its form either adenine or guanine that also requires uh, different amino acid derivatives because the production of purine base and structure requires different amino acids and the modifications of the amino acids so the purine biosynthesis or pyrimidine biosynthesis in a sense of nucleotide metabolism it depends on two different steps one is the metabolic pathway associated with carbohydrates that is pentose phosphate pathway because this charged or activated form of ribose 5 phosphate is actually produced from pentose phosphate pathway so this is a part of carbohydrate metabolism while the second step or second part of the story of the nucleotide metabolism that is the production of adenine and guanine the actual purine base uh, it requires different amino acids the example of such amino acids glycine aspartic acid glutamine these are the examples so these are the amino acids they help to produce adenine and guanine the actual purine bases while pentose phosphate pathway which is a part of uh, the carbohydrate biochemical pathways that generates ribose 5 phosphate and then this ribose 5 phosphate and the derivatives and converted form of amino acids they, they, they bring ribose phosphate with uh, the adenine or guanine bases and they bring them together to form uh, the actual structure and there are so many different types of enzymes required in the different stages and different processes one of the example is prpp the one of the most important uh, enzyme that is involved in the process of purine and pyrimidine biosynthesis now what is prpp and how exactly the whole process of purine and pyrimidine nucleotide synthesis is processed and done to understand that we will watch the second part of the video now i'm going to show an animation uh, that is going to tell you about how exactly each of the stages are are done and are catalyzed by the enzymes and then finally we get our product okay guys now let's talk about the regulation of purine biosynthesis pathway we've seen the purine biosynthesis it starts with ribose 5 phosphate and involves several intermediates in between and the ultimate products that we require are ATP or GTP now we know in this case of the purine biosynthesis 
it's very important to keep them so much tightly regulated otherwise difference amount of ATP and GTP presence inside the cell can cause severe problems so we know in this case you will see most of the product inhibitions and few of the feedback inhibition processes that governs the inhibition inhibitions in this table are mentioned with this red stop signs and the activation is only one that is maintained with this green dot let's talk about the inhibition and control in the first stage of purine biosynthesis ribose 5-phosphate is converted to IMP in the second stage IMP is a precursor for both production of ATP and GTP now ribose phosphate pyrophosphokinase that is the enzyme which is a very important enzyme converting the ribose 5-phosphate into PRPP and this enzyme should be properly regulated because this is the first rate determining step of the reaction and this converting enzyme is inhibited with the presence of both ADP and GDP in high concentrations the second one is the enzyme that converts PRPP into 5-phosphoribosylamine and that is known as amidophosphoryl transferase and this amidophosphoryl or amidophosphoryl transferase is allosterically regulated and stimulated by the substrate PRPP it's stimulated by PRPP's presence a process known as feed forward activation and the enzyme is also subject to allosteric feedback inhibition by the products example AMP ADP ATP or GMP GDP and GTP whatever of them if are present are going to allosterically inhibit feedback inhibition so that it can prevent the formation of 5-phosphoribosylamine in the branched pathway beyond the production of IMP that is the conversion of IMP into ATP and GTP another level of inhibition occurs in the adenine branch AMP is a competitive inhibitor with IMP for the production of adenyl succinate and in case of the GTP hand or GTP branch GMP act as a competitive inhibitor of IMP to prevent it to be converted into XMP in both these cases this GMP and AMP are preventing the IMP to be converted into XMP and adenylosuccinate respectively in addition to the regulation by mechanism of inhibition and activation the synthesis of adenine and guanine nucleotides is also coordinated while the GTP is a co-substrate for the synthesis of adenylosuccinate which will ultimately produce ATP and in this case GTP co-substrate for the synthesis of adenylosuccinate from IMP and ATP is a co-substrate for the synthesis of GMP so that the production of GTP is regulated based on the amount of ATP present and the production of ATP required the amount of GTP present so they are cross-linked and their auto regulation on the generation of the GTP and ATP are controlled by uh, themselves and the opposite class of each other so this complete pattern of regulation of purine biosynthesis is depicted in this picture where we see there is only one activation and there are multiple inhibitions mostly product inhibition and a few of feedback inhibition and few of competitive inhibition at the end and we also saw the coordination between the production of ATP and GTP so that's all about nucleotide metabolism if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that thank you